Now, when you have a technology or a space where the value of the network is so high, clearly the best benefit to everybody is going to come when everyone uses the same thing. That's why you have, um, in economic terms, the notion of a, nat a natural monopoly. This is not just in the case of software or communications. It's the case for power lines. Everyone in a country uses the same sort of plug, and when they don't, then behind me I see people experimenting with interoperability where you've got three or four plugs connected to each other. Um, this is something all of us who travel to different countries have to face. But generally, you have the same system um, throughout because it makes no sense for one country to have 25 different types of plugs or 25 different types of railway trains, right? So these are natural monopolies that traditionally have been run either by government monopolies or have involved strong amounts of government regulation. Um, in the case of technology and communications, you have natural monopolies, but they're not government-run. Um, they're not even government-regulated most of the time because most of the innovation has happened in the private sector. That does not stop them from being natural monopolies. You tend to have the same technology that everyone uses. So the key issue there, which standards bodies try to resolve, is how do you have people using the same technology, whether it arises from the market or it's designed and decided by some sort of government or non-government body? How do you have people using the same technology, but you don't have a single company or a group of companies controlling it? How do you have a monopoly in the technology without having a monopoly in the supply of that technology? And that's where standards bodies come up with all sorts of rules. That's where interoperability comes into play. And that's where you have standards bodies applying rules on intellectual property rights, the creation of standards, and so on. And they adopt different methods. The W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, has adopted a, a rule on royalty-free standards because that's what they believe ensures that standards remain open. And that is um, something that um, I have described using the economic basis of defining standards, where you have proprietary standards, where you might have a natural monopoly in the technology, and that might lead to a monopoly in the supply of the technology. You have one company controlling things, which happens a lot in the software sector. Um, and uh, the next step is what I would call semi-open standards, where you have... Um, a natural monopoly in a technology, and there is a standards body that is trying to govern this so that there are different suppliers for the standard. But there are rights attached to the standard that give some body, some companies, privileges. Some companies are better off in implementing these standards than others. And then truly open standards are ones where you have maybe a natural monopoly in the technology, everyone uses the technology, but any possible vendor, any potential vendor or producer can come up and is at the same level at implementing that technology. And the success of the World Wide Web and the Internet in general has shown us how important these open standards are. 